Hello and welcome to Anton Math. Now in this video we're kicking off part 6 of our pre-calculus series. And part 6 is going to be trigonometric functions, uh, the right triangle approach, right? Uh, in part 5 we talked about all the trigonometric functions of real numbers and in this part we're going to be looking um, at the trigonometric functions really defined in terms of angles. Now the first video, this one uh, right here, we're going to be talking about angle measure. Now the first thing I need to talk about is is what we mean when we say you know angle measure. What exactly does that mean? So let's say that I have these two rays and they share a common vertex. Okay, so uh, these two rays, you know, kind of line segments. They're both starting from this same vertex right here. They share that vertex. This is ray one. And we'll call this one ray two. Now, typically, we'll have an initial side and a terminal side um, for these angles. So I'll call this my initial side. And once we get into the xy plane, we'll have something standard, kind of like we did uh, for the unit circle. And we'll call this the terminal side. Now, the way that we measure an angle is going to be this right here. And I'll usually use the variable theta to talk about angles. Right? Theta is going to be my uh, angle variable, just like we use x and y for real numbers. We use theta for angles. So the measure of an angle is going to be the amount of rotation about the vertex. In other words, how much I need to rotate um, required to move this first ray, ray 1, my initial ray, onto my terminal ray, ray 2. Okay, so we measure the angle and how much movement I need to rotate this first ray to have it be on top of the second ray. Now, what, what's important to notice is that angle measure actually has nothing to do with how long these rays are. Right? An angle is the same between two rays no matter what their length is. If I extend these rays out a bit, well, let's say these rays you know, were, were over here right and let's say they they ended there this angle is not going to change no matter how much I change the length of these two rays I still need to rotate it with respect to this vertex the same amount okay uh, thinking of think of it as you know if you're swinging a rope above your head if it's a short rope or a long rope you know it, you're still doing the same total amount of rotations if you swing it five times above your head um, whether it's short or long you still swung it five times above your head right so very important, angle measure has nothing to do with the length of these lines. It's just how much I'm rotating them to make them on top of each other. Now we have two different measurement systems that we use um, for angles. The first measurement system that you're probably familiar with is degrees. Right? Degrees is something that we've all seen before. Uh, I know that a full rotation or a full circle in degrees is 360 degrees, isn't it? Oop, 360 degrees. That's that's gross. 360 degrees. And this is one full circle of degrees. Uh, or in other words, one degree is equal to one 360th of a circle, right? Or of a of a rotation. Okay. Now degrees degrees have been around for a long time. Uh, degrees started back with the ancient Babylonians, and degrees made a lot of sense uh, with their number system because their number system was a base 60. They they grouped things in groups of 60. So 360 that's six 60s, right? It makes a lot of sense for them. Um, there's another system of measurement called grades, and and we won't use that here. Um, that's based off of the base 10 system where there's 400 degrees or 400 grades in a rotation. Um, but what we're going to be using with degrees is something called radians. Now radians is a very natural approach and it's the one that I'm going to be using mostly in this course um, because it it carries over very well in calculus. In calculus we use a lot of radians. We don't really use any degrees there. So let's talk about what a radian is. And I've typed up a definition here. Uh, in a circle of radius r, one radian is the measure of an angle that subtends an arc equal in length to the radius. Now what subtends means is right here you'll see I have this little diagram at the bottom. If I have this arc length, this arc length is r, the same r as my radius r, right? If I have this arc of length r, then the angle that is associated, you see how this, this angle kind of opens up and ends at this arc, 
that's called subtends. We say this arc length subtends this angle, and this angle subtends this arc length. That's the word that we use um, to indicate this relation right here. So one radian angle subtends an arc length of r. Two radians, an angle of two radians, subtends an arc length of 2r, doesn't it? Okay. Now we need to connect this to degrees, and that's why I've written the second line. In particular, on the unit circle, the measure of an angle in radians is the length of the arc that it subtends. Okay. So what does that mean? Uh, what, what am I saying there? Let's say this is my unit circle. Okay, so my radius here on my unit circle is 1. Okay. So on the unit circle, the measure of an angle in radians is the length of the arc at subtends. So if I have an arc length, this is kind of going back to section 5, if I have an arc length, right, I start here and I end there, my arc length here, let's say, is pi over 2, then the angle that subtends this arc length is also going to be pi over 2. Now this pi over 2 over here, this is pi over 2 in length, whatever my measurement system is. For example, if I had a radius of 1 inch, this pi over 2 on the outside is pi over 2 inches. Now on the inside here, the angle, this is going to be pi over 2 radians. We use radians to indicate angle measurement. As soon as we come out to this arc length, uh, we're not in radians anymore. We're in whatever the length of measurement we're talking about. So all this to say, if I do a full rotation in radians, we see here on my unit circle that if I do a full rotation, I'll, I'll change colors here a little bit, one full rotation is going to be equal to the distance around the circle of rotation. right? And from our last uh, part, part 5, we know that if I do one full rotation around the circle, I've traveled a total distance around the circle of 2 pi. Well, that means that I'm traveling an angular distance on the inside of 2 pi radians. Okay, so we have 2 pi radians is one full circle, just like 360 degrees is one full circle. Okay, so we have this natural relationship between degrees and radians. I'll go ahead and take this down for now. We have this natural relationship, and what that relationship is, is we see that 360 degrees is one full rotation, and that's the same as 2 pi radians. Right? These are equivalent angular measures. So we can use this to establish a kind of a formula for converting between radians and degrees. Right? Uh, from here it's very easy to see that 180 degrees is going to be equal to pi radians. Right? Now if 180 degrees is pi radians, I can get two formulas from this. Right? The first one, I can divide pi from both sides and I get that one radian is equal to 180 divided by pi degrees, isn't it? And on the other side, if I divide both sides by 180, I get that 1 degree is equal to 180, oh, sorry, is equal to pi over 180 radians, isn't it? All right. Well, let, let's let's do a couple of quick examples here while I have this up of of converting these. Um, example. Uh, let's say I have 120 degrees, and I want to convert that to radians. Well, I have 120 degrees. That's equal to 120 times one degree, isn't it? And now I can plug in my formula here. I know 1 degree is pi over 180 radians, so this is equal to 120 times pi over 180 radians. And now all we have to do is simplify. Okay, so uh, those zeros cancel. I get 12 over 18 pi. And 12 over 18, those are both divisible by 6, right? So this is going to be 2 pi over 3 radians, right? So a pretty easy conversion. Uh, let's just go the other way real quick, uh, just for some quick practice. Uh, let's say I want to do, I don't know, um, say 11 pi over 6 radians 2 degrees, 
right? I need to make this conversion. We'll usually be converting from degrees to radians. A lot of the formulas we're going to learn in the next uh, video, uh, we need to have radians in order to use them. Um, but just you know, for practice, so we know that this works both ways. I know 11 pi over 6 radians, that's the same as 11 pi over 6 times 1 radian, right? So 11 pi over 6 radians, that's going to be equal to 11 pi over 6 times 1 radian, and I know 1 radian is 180 over pi degrees. Alright, and uh, 6 kind of simplifies this 180 down, right? 180 is divisible by 6, it becomes 30. Uh, these pi's cancel, I get 30 times 11, which is 330 degrees. So 11 pi over 6 radians is 330 degrees. Now before I end this video, I just have one quick thing I want to talk about. And uh, that is our standard position for these angles in the xy plane. I'm not going to talk about this much the rest of this section, um, but it is covered by this section in the course. Uh, so for my students, you may see a homework problem. Let me just cover that real quick. In the xy plane, right, this is my y, this is my x, the standard position for an angle is that I'm going to have my initial side here. Up here you see my initial side with R1. That's always going to be my positive x-axis, right? This is my initial side always. We just use the positive x-axis for my initial side. So wherever my angle is, it's going to be determined by this other ray, and that's going to be my terminal side. And so that's my terminal side there. And we have, of course, two different directions, don't we? Uh, just like in the last part, if I move in this counterclockwise direction, starting from my initial side, this is positive. This is for positive or for an angle theta that's greater than zero. And if I move clockwise here, this is going to be uh, denoted by a negative angle or for some theta that's less than zero, right? That's my negative direction. Otherwise, we indicate this we kind of indicate the angle that we're talking about with this notation. We give a little arrow to show which direction we're moving, and we denote it by the variable or by uh, the number if we know the actual amount of the angle. Now there's one little uh, definition I want to go over. It's called coterminal. We have this concept of coterminal angles, and you might be able to, to see what this means just by the word itself, coterminal, right? That means they're both the same terminal, right? Um, if we have two different angles, um, they're called coterminal if they have the same terminal side. For example, um, 30 degrees, and then you know I can add any argument of 2 pi or 360 degrees, right? So 30 degrees, 390 degrees, um, or I could subtract 360 degrees, let's say negative 330 degrees. These are all coterminal. They're all going to be about right here, right? I could call this 30 degrees. And then, you know, maybe this around here could be my negative 330 degrees, right? They both end at the same terminal line. So we call them coterminal. Um, just like we had, you know, all those increments of 2 pi in the last part, uh, we had those reference numbers would be coterminal. And, you know, let's talk about this in radians real quick. This would be pi over 6, um, 13 pi over 6, and negative 11 pi over 6, right? We can do this in degrees or in radians. And really, coterminal angles are just angles that are a difference of 2 pi or a difference of 360 degrees. All right, so we covered that. Now, in the next video, I'm going to talk about um, different properties of circles that we can now derive out using this concept of angular measure that we learned in this video.